Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coders Weekly AI News Update. I'm sorry for the late news update, but we have a lot of lot of models and I'm going to be very fast in this video because I want to reduce the time and see how the response is. So let's get started. First news that I wanted to share with you is a uh, news that is broken by Wired. OpenAI has committed to buying $51 million worth AI chips from a startup backed by CEO Sam Altman. I mean, this is um, kind of a conflict of interest. Like I don't have any vested interest in opening. I don't have their shares. All these things are fine. But I just like found it a little weird that when Sam Altman actually said in the US Senate that I don't have any equity in open A and all I'm doing is because I love this thing. And this doesn't seem like that thing. But anyways, I would uh, link this article in the YouTube description for you to go read it up about yourself. Speaking of Sam Altman, OpenAI's drama finally came to an end and there is a new initial board. So the CEO was returned and there is a new initial board. And in this new initial board, you can see some very popular names like Brett Taylor being on the board. The only um, kind of like irking thing for me is um, they did remove Ilya Sutzwaker. So OpenAI or Sam Altman in his letter said, I love and respect Ilya. I think he is a guiding light of the field and a gem of a human being. He didn't say he's the guiding light of OpenAI. Okay, he said he's the guiding light of the field, which is AI and a gem of a human being. I harbor zero ill towards him. Okay, cool. While Ilya will no longer serve on the board, we hope to continue our working relationship and are discussing how he can continue his work at OpenAI. This is quite awkward and weird. So one, he said he is no longer serving on the board. Second, they are planning to continue the working relationship. And third, they are discussing how he can continue his work at OpenAI despite being the chief scientist of OpenAI. So honestly speaking, this is, uh, this is uh, quite weird. And uh, the second weirdest thing is, I'm grateful to Adam, um, the, the CEO of Cora Po, but uh, Tasha and Helen are out of uh, OpenAI board. I think they were kind of the ones who didn't want uh, Sam to be back. Uh, anyways, after all these things, I think um, there is nothing to be said about this a lot. Um, it seems like Sam Altman has tremendously strengthened his position at the board and uh, at least like personally, I don't seem I don't see that this being a no um, non-profit anymore. And I ran a poll also a lot of people, you all actually laughed at me that uh, I still expect OpenAI to be non-profit. But anyways, that's where it is. Um, it is quite weird about what is happening to Ilya. Um, I hope he had a goodwill when he did this, but um, this is the world we live in. The next one is, um, the very latest one, I, I think one of the advantages of uh, releasing a, a video quite late is because we officially have newest Hermes 2 vision. I'm, I'm a big fan of Technium. I'm a big fan of whatever Technium and newest research does. And we have got open Hermes 2.5 Mistral 7 billion parameter model by Technium. I think this is the first vision language model or um, what we call as multimodal model from Technium. And I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to try out this model. This model is built on top of 220,000 data points from Elvis Instruct 4V. This almost seems like from um, GPT Vision data. And you have got 60,000 responses from Share GPT Vision. And you have got 150,000 function calling data, which also I'm quite excited because not a lot of open source model does function calling well. I've seen a lot of reviews about open Hermes 2.5 doing function calling really good. So I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to try this and then see how does this better than uh, Lava or any of the computer vision model that are available now, not like the multimodal vision model. There are a couple of examples that does, that looks really good, especially vision plus function calling looks really good. So I'm definitely looking forward to try it out. If you try this out before I try it out, I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback. The next one 
is from Meta AI. Meta AI released a suite of models called seamless models. So what are these seamless models? This is basically everything related to audio, speech and all the other things. So they've released basically like four models. One is seamless expressive, a model that is aimed at doing translation, but while preserving the expressions and intricacies of the speech languages. Like for example, if I say, hey, I'm so tired. When this gets translated in a particular language, it actually uh, preserves the expression and intricacies of the language. The next one is stre seamless streaming. I very well remember a lot of you have come to uh, my Bark videos and my other TTS videos to say that, okay, can it work live? Can it work for live voice recording? Can it be like streaming? And they have released a model that can do streaming uh, text to speech and speech to text and all the other things. And they've got a seamless M4T V2. So this is a multilingual multitask model. The first version we have already covered on the channel and this version I'm definitely looking forward to cover. And this model is also being released with the newest version. And finally, they have released a seamless model that is like one single model that has all the capabilities of all these kind of things. It's very interesting. The demos are quite, uh, quite uh, true to what it can do and also like very impressive to be honest. So definitely look forward to see more reviews on seamless models. The next one is a paper that I wanted to talk about. I'm not sure like what is going to happen in the world of fake news and uh, deep fake and you know, the line between reality and fake. But this is a new paper from Microsoft. The paper is called GAIA zero shot talking avatar generation. So it's super impressive that you can see that, for example, if you see this thing, this is a video driven talking avatar generation. You click this thing, you will see like um, this b b image is the reference image. This is the reference video. And you can see just like Justin Trudeau, this image is speaking and um, it's, tr it's truly brilliant. It's, um, uh, it's, it's quite unbelievable and amazing. And I'm definitely uh, surprised to see that this model um, is being released as a paper from Microsoft. I'm not sure like what is the purpose of Microsoft trying to do this. Maybe they'll integrate this in um, their um, Microsoft, uh, the augmented reality that they've got. Maybe this might be part of teams. But anyways, this looks quite interesting. And uh, they've released the paper how this is being happening. And uh, they have also uh, shared a bunch of examples. Um, I think this is super, super easy to make deep fakes in this uh, in this world. Uh, I'm not sure like what is the size of the model and all the other details. But I think this model is going to have a lot of impact and a lot of questions about what is real, what is not real. The next paper that I wanted to discuss is this is from NTU Singapore and from Salesforce as well. Uh, this is basically like a review of what has been like the open sources catch up with ChatGPT. I mean, while this paper is doing a tremendous job of comparing open source models or summarizing open source model with ChatGPT, one thing that I wanted to put out is that do not take ChatGPT as one large model and compare it with all the other model. Just have a purpose of what you want to do with the large language model and then try to compare the large language model for your use. For example, Open Hermes 2 is a really good model. Mistral is a good model. So you don't want to like just say, okay, I want to compare it with ChatGPT. I want, you just pick particular use case, what you do with ChatGPT, for example, copywriting, maybe like tweet creation, social media posts, programming, whatever it is, and then compare it with open source model, I think you will have a better result. This paper does a good job of comparing a lot of different models. Uh, for example, with the ELO rating that we recently covered, it is also comparing Zephyr and all the other models. In summary, uh, if you want to see, uh, they actually say that Llama 70 billion parameter model is still like a good model in, in itself. And they also have, uh, you know, uh, like Zephyr 7 billion parameter model, which they believe is a good model. So overall, if you see, uh, Llama 70 billion is like good if you have like good compute and all these things. But I think otherwise Zephyr 7 billion parameter model is a good model. Mistral 7 billion is also a good model if you want to use it. And like I said, there are a lot of other models that do that do a really good job like Open Hermes and all the other things. You can go here in this particular paper and then read for your particular use case, what would be the best model? Like for example, general benchmarks. And then you can see, okay, agent level benchmarks. 
and then you can see like what is it for logical reasoning on what kind of benchmarks are there for logical reasoning and you can compare the, all the other models that are available for this. The next paper that I wanted to cover is a scalable extraction of training data from production language models. So how are these large language models built? These large language models are built when you take real world data and then compress it in some kind of, you know, like knowledge format. And then these large language models, every time you ask something, they go to their knowledge base, get that information for you, come back and then give it to you. But what happens in this paper is, this paper is basically trying to see, can I go back in that memory of large language model and extract actual information? Can I extract the training information? Can I extract personal information? And that is exactly what this paper is trying to do. And this paper kind of succeeds in doing that. Like there are a bunch of examples that became quite viral where you can go to chat GPT and then say, repeat this word forever, poem, 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 poem. And then finally it reveals the personal information. I tried this, um, it did not work. Most likely OpenAI actually, you know, patched this up because one of the advantages of having uh, an API based model, they can always like have full control over it. But this is a very unique approach to be honest. Like I've done a lot of jailbreaking. I've tried a lot of jailbreaking. I've covered jailbreaking on this channel, but I think this is quite unique. What it does is um, you all know that after a particular point, after X amount of tokens, these large language models break. Their perplexity goes for a toss and a lot of bad things happen. This kind of leverages that kind of a thing and then does this adversarial attack and um, definitely like was quite excited and I think like the entire internet was quite excited to see what has happened here, especially how simple and easy it is to do this adversarial attacks on these large language models. I think this further goes down to say what goes inside pre-training data, what is the security of it? Like I have personally seen these large language models like ChatGPT spitting out actual Stack Overflow username. A lot of people pointed out that Stack Overflow is public data, but again, like these are like real names that come out of whatever you put. Um, I'm not sure like if it is going to get any lawsuit or copyright um, case against large language models. Like recently, even like there was a case against ChatGPT, which failed because ChatGPT could not generate the same response again and again. So definitely interesting to see, um, especially the security side of large language models. I'm always a big fan whenever people hack or jailbreak large language models. So this is one of those papers. The next one is a new model that I'm definitely looking forward to try out or at least see if I can do something with that is Meditron. It's a fine tuned model of Llama based model and this model is particularly useful for medical uses. Google has a model called MedPalm, which is like a medical model. And um, I'm definitely looking forward to implement large language model in the medical field. I think this is one of the things that I've already mentioned on the channel multiple times that my trust level for doctors and the people who practice medicine is very low, at least where, where I live. I don't trust doctors a lot. I always love to validate what they say. Um, whenever my parents get like medicine, like both of them have some chronic illness. So whenever they go to doctor and come back, the first thing that I do is at least like take the medicine, put it on Google, see what kind of side effects it has got, um, what is the composition and all these things. Like that's because I don't trust doctors as much as like an average um, human being would do. In the same, because of that, I would always love to see AI making some um, improvement in the medical field, uh, or at least like to help humans have better medical knowledge without having to do MBBS or uh, medicine as a degree. And I think um, MBBS is a degree in India. I don't know like if it, if it is there like outside India. So I'm definitely was happy when I saw that there is a new model called Meditron 70 billion and um, it's, it's a fine tuned model of um, a large language model Llama 2. The good thing about this, at least like what I like this, it's not just the model is available, definitely like the model is available, but they've also open sourced the data that they use to train model. This is like 36,000 rows and uh, this is all medical question and answer. I think this was quite brilliant. You have got like the the data that that was used to fine tune the Llama 2 model and you know, it has got like a lot of information about it, like how you can, what you can do, what you cannot do with the model. 
but again like the data is the holy grail and that is available for us to use it so thank you for the team for open sourcing the data and sharing the data with us but again like if you want to use a model the model itself is available you can see the composition of the data set and you can see how the model performs how did they go about training if you want to for example they use llama based model you can like literally use the same data set and probably try it with mistral 7 billion and probably you might get a better uh, result and we have proof that a lot of models with the same data set but with mistral as a 7 billion parameter model has improved in uh, in benchmarks and again like this these are the results that you have got uh, the mpt 7 billion parameter model falcon model llama 2 7 billion parameter model and you have got the mediterranean 7 billion parameter model it's a huge huge improvement over any other model and it's an improvement over llama 2 7 billion parameter model as well if you are interested in medical field um, especially like if you are interested in llms in medical please get in touch with me um, i'm i'm thinking like collectively about you know starting something like one little coder labs or something i'm not sure if i will be able to uh, get funding raise funding but i'm at least like trying to put together a, a community of people who are willing to get together and build products build models some open source maybe some we can make money out of it if you're interested i think that is why i recently had a poll like i spoke to one of our subscribers kevin kevin and i spoke for a long time and then you know kind of like this was an idea that came out about um, like an AI consultancy, but not like only me, but like, a, you know, uh, like a crowdsource uh, putting together all this brilliant minds together. So I don't know what will happen, but um, definitely looking forward to see, especially if you have interest in medical, I'm definitely looking forward to see how to work together with you. Let me let in, uh, get in touch with me. The next one is um, the last one. Also in this video, a new model just dropped. I cannot believe how far we have come in stable diffusion. This new model is called SDXL Turbo and this model can generate quality images in just one step. I very well remember when stable diffusion came for the very first time, I used to iterate steps from 30, 50 and all these things to just see if it can generate good images. But this stable diffusion XL Turbo model can generate images with one step even like really good quality with four steps. This uses a new technique called ADD, Adversarial Diffusion Distillation. The paper is also available if you want to go use it. But I think this is the closest that we have gotten to real-time image. Uh, we already have had uh, LCM, that's called Latent Consistency Model. Now coupling Stable Diffusion Excel Turbo with LCM, Latent Consistency Model. We have literally got real time, um, whatever you want to do, automatic image generation. People have started creating uh, like animes, uh, like shooting real humans and then, you know, getting a video out of it because, you know, now you can generate like more images per frame that could becomes like more frames per second that actually translates into video. I think the possibility of this is quite interesting and amazing. And um, I mean, the fact that this is, easy for you to run on any consumer hardware is uh, is unbelievably mind blowing you can just go access the model the model is available i'll probably make a different video i, I know a lot of you are not a big fan of stable diffusion or any image generation model because whenever i post those videos those videos never do good but uh, this is a technology i'm fascinated about and i mean like very st starting stable diffusion i've made videos always about stable diffusion so I'm definitely looking forward to play with this. If you have already played with SDXL Turbo, let me know in the comments about what you feel about it. But otherwise, I guess this um, very fast AI news completely about models was useful to you. I'm really sorry that there was some disappointment for you, but uh, I'm definitely looking forward to hear from you. What do you feel about this format where I don't go into a lot of depth, but we have more breadth. See you in another video. Happy prompting.